Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm fantastic, Nathan. How are you today? I'm feeling fantastic as well because having you in my life is a huge blessing. And I don't know if I say it on the podcast enough, but I'm feeling good today. I love you too, brother, man. Thank you for the, uh, and you don't need to get into this. It's not why I'm bringing it up, but thank you for the video today. You made my fucking day. Awesome. So we've got a very um, edgy (laughs) title for today's podcast, Changing Positions synchronicity lining up with episode number 69 what the heck could changing positions mean well part of the reason that i wanted to do this episode live in the group today um, is because this whole idea this whole philosophy goes right in alignment with how i think things should be done as a sales guy who used to do it the dirty way i've changed positions on how i do the thing that i do And it's essentially what I teach. And where this came from was actually a conversation that I had with one of my clients today. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dig into that too much, but he experienced something over the last couple of days with another person on the internet um, who has a thing to sell. They're fairly well known. And um, as he was describing it, I was like totally fucking blown away that this kind of shit goes on. So I figured for this episode that we could do almost like a, an overview or an outline of what is typically done and kind of cover how it could be done. Um, and that's kind of where this comes from. Okay. So I, I feel like you're being a little bit vague and we obviously don't want to give away everything at the beginning of the show, but let's just jump right into it and kind of dive into what it is that you're talking about. Sure. So my client um, got into a conversation with somebody on Facebook who sells something for another platform and it's geared towards lead generation. And the, the whole premise, the whole idea was here's this amazing thing that I've put together and it's free comment below and you can have it. Which is interesting because we do a thing and, and teach a thing where you do something similar. The problem was once, once my client commented below because he wanted to see because he's always learning because he's a smart guy, he got a message and it started to go bad, totally sideways. Um, instead of, hey, thanks for the love on my post, here's that thing that you commented for, it was basically a bunch of fuckery. It was basically a hard open. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is how good it is. This is how big it is. This is how long it is. This is who it's for. It does everything for everybody. Da, 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 right? Hard open. The slick backed, fast talking, 20 something monkey leaning in front of a Lamborghini. And it was totally not the right way to position himself to a new potential client, but he went that route because that's what most people teach. So it went from there into basically a hard qualify, right? So my client is in this conversation with this guy who, like I said, is fairly well known and don't reach out and ask me because I'm not going to tell you who it was. This is actually somebody that I've been kind of half paying attention to myself. So I was kind of like, what the fuck? Um, Instead of just saying, here's this cool thing and I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think, he went right into basically hard qualifying. And that's not really, like if you think about it, if you think about natural human interaction, if you meet somebody at Starbucks, right? And you say, hey, what's up? And they say, hey, what's up back? And you say, I like your watch. And they say, oh my God, so you like watches. How many you got? What do you got? And you just go into it. It's too hard, too fast. And most people with something to sell go totally the wrong fucking direction with that. It should just be a simple, hey, so what's going on in your world? What are you doing? Right? Anyways, like 30 messages back and forth later, 
my clients all like been out of shape and pissed off and irritated and all of that because here's the rest of of what what went down totally hard qualify the guy totally tried to hard close him essentially a bait and switch never gave him the thing that he said hey i'm interested in right never like basically told told my client um yeah fuck you it's by invite only right so it's totally totally a bait and switch and then went on to degrade my client and it actually gets worse than that um you don't deserve this and if you're not doing this and that and the other and blah 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 um you're going to fail and and all this crazy shit and i was just like holy shit balls that's what my way of doing this client acquisition thing is competing against oh my god it's just not the right way to treat people well then it got worse he degraded my client and then fucking blocked him right and i know my client i know him pretty well the dude makes a bunch of money he totally could have paid a bunch for whatever but the guy like totally never gave him the chance to even get to know him in his world and after after we had that conversation today i was thinking about this and i was thinking there's something that we talked about, I think, on the last podcast episode. There's two ways that salesy happens bad. People who are really skilled in the sales process that just use all of the dirty tricks to fuck with people's heads. And then the other people that are actually good people that have learned those gross fucking tricks. What's interesting is, is the guy who we're speaking of, he's not a he's not an anomaly. He's not a unicorn. He teaches essentially the same thing most people do. Pick a grouping of people here in this world, we call it ideal client avatar. And then on, on that platform, go scrape their fucking emails, right? Hundreds, if not thousands at a time and send them this cold message. And eventually you get a couple of people, typically the bottom of the barrel to respond. And then here's all of the psychological persuasion hacks to get people to make a decision. And so you can get 20 or 30 or 40 booked calls a week gross fuck that and then you can turn some of those really awful not good fit clients into a client because you can make them make a decision because here's the way to make people make decision when they're really not the right fit and i was thinking about the live that i did in the group today 10 or 20 or 30 booked fucking strategy calls a week really who the fuck has time for that uh, like a full-time job right there. If I worked six or seven hours a day, which I don't, the last fucking thing I'd want to do is have half of that or more in strategy calls with people that aren't a good fit for what I do. Like, ew, gross. No, thanks. Nope. So I put it in the fucking notes and I said, hey, we should talk about this because you're always good at pushing back and, and giving me a hard time, especially <laughs> when we're doing this live. Yeah, so actually, I don't really have very much pushback other than to say that this is such a common thing that I see everywhere. And I'm just, I, I, you didn't tell me anything about this before we started the show. I'm just going to make an assumption. It sounds like what I've, what I've experienced on LinkedIn. It's the, it seems like this is a pretty common strategy of what this person was selling. It seems like a pretty common strategy that I get approached with on LinkedIn and it always turns me off. Um, the Facebook post of, Hey, I've got this amazing thing. Hit me up if you want it or type info if you want it. It's such a common thing. And for a marketer, somebody like me instantly, I'm like, okay, this is just some kind of like sleazy sales approach, but to hear it go so sideways, I don't think I've ever heard it go that way before. Well, I wasn't even going to bring this up, but since you kind of breached that, last week I dropped a couple of posts in my style on how I do that in the group. And a couple of those posts have a bunch of engagement. I've started, a, I don't know, three or four dozen conversations. And I've finished up a couple of simple, easy conversations with people today and I have a couple of new clients signed up. There's there's an aspect to that process that works, but then it's the demeanor behind it. And like ultimately what I'm getting to is 
if you have to do this client acquisition thing from the standpoint of where you need 10 or 20 or 30 potential clients a week to have a conversation with, to land even, even five or six or seven new clients a week, you're doing the doing the wrong way. It doesn't need to be a numbers game like that. And I was, it floored me. I was fucking blown away that that guy with that public presence, and it's not the first one. I've actually, I've had some conversations with people that sell a thing that's similar on getting clients on LinkedIn and or Facebook. And the process is the process, but to then treat somebody in that manner, they're only playing a numbers game. And it is just so fundamentally completely opposite of how I think things should be done. Look, I have a thing for sale. I've actually got a few of them for sale. Me and every person that I talk to about that both deserve better treatment than that. Like, like here's, here's from the guy who's got something to sell from his perspective, he's burning through leads and burning through leads and burning through leads and burning through leads and burning through leads. And And eventually he's burned enough leads that he's going to have a public presence built on people that have been fucked around by him. I don't know about you guys, but at the end of the day, we all talk about shit that's like fucking gross. Duh. Even if it's just one-to-one or, you know, talking to the people that we know, like, and trust behind the scenes. I had a completely different perspective on this individual, which is interesting because I've had enough conversations with people that do the sales and client acquisition thing to, to get a sense of it. If you're doing, if you're doing it on LinkedIn, here's what they're teaching. I'll just save you the six or $7,000 that they're charging for it. Go on LinkedIn, add absolutely everybody that you possibly can. The limit's somewhere around 50 or 60 people a day. Okay. Don't send them a message to begin with because everybody gets one and you're not clever enough to come up with one that's personal. Okay. Like they actually teach this fucking nonsense. Then what we want you to do is we want you to use this tool or that tool or this other tool to scrape emails off of LinkedIn. And then we're going to give you this fuck you pay me template that you can just mail to them. And you're going to send out hundreds, if not thousands of these a day, maybe a week. And you're going to get a few people to respond. And those people you want to get onto a strategy call because they're not going to waste your time, I promise. And then we're going to give you this script that you can mentally fuck them through the ears to get them to buy your shit. I don't know about you, but like, I wouldn't treat my wife that way. I don't treat my kids that way. I don't treat my neighbor that I don't like that way. If you want a fast, easy, gross way to get really, really awful, bad clients, there you go. Go do it. Have fun with that. Well, see, here's the thing. I know personally, before I came into your world, that was the only way that I knew how to do it. And that was the biggest thing that was holding me back was because I can't do that. I just, it doesn't feel right to me. I, I hated it. And everybody that I bought their courses on, on client acquisition or on how to do cold calls or how to do cold emails, that was pretty much the standard thing. It was just throw it as, as, at as many people as possible, wait for some people to, throw, to raise their hands, and then try and shove your shit down their throat. And I just... I, to be honest, man, I was just like, I'll just go by word of mouth. I'll just wait until somebody refers me. And that was the the best way for me to get business. Coming into your world, I feel like I have a much better way now to go about doing it. But like I said, and I've said this before, and I, I sound like a total fanboy, but the truth of the matter is I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on marketing and client acquisition and all these different courses and books and trainings. And hands down, the stuff that you teach is revolutionary. It was the only stuff that's worked for me and it completely changed my life. Um, And I I appreciate that. And um, I get it. There are actually people that have been teaching the thing that I teach. Like it's, I didn't recreate the wheel. Look, here's, here's what it is. Here's how to be good at what you do, be good to people and still fucking sell your shit without being a douchebag. I'm not the only one that teaches this. I didn't recreate the fucking wheel, but here's, here's the thing. You can learn, man, I've said this so many fucking times. I can't even count it. 
Think about martial arts for a minute. You can get a ninth degree black belt in any martial arts you apply yourself to time and effort and energy and practice. And even for people who take to martial arts quickly, it takes fucking years, right? It doesn't happen in a three-day weekend. Well, you can go to a three-day seminar to learn how to tactfully put somebody down on the ground and harm them in self-defense. That's like the traditional bullshit sales crap that most people are teaching because most people don't want to take the time to actually learn how to wield this the right way. The other way is years and years and years and years and years of practice and getting your ass kicked and handed to you left, right, and center until you eventually figure it out. Can you use these tactics and these principles and these processes? Yeah. Can you help somebody make a decision instead of letting them force you to play the follow up with me program? Yeah, totally. But there's a way to do it where you turn people into haters legit and they've actually got good reason where there's a way to do it the right way. And most people just think that, well, I don't want to spend nine or 10 years learning how to do this the right way sales. I'll just go learn this persuasion hack crap so I can get it done. And they're really good. They hire people like you that are good at copywriting to sell their shit. Like let's be, let's be real about it. Right. It's dialed in to sell the thing. But then when you start doing the thing, you're like, man, this kind of feels gross. Like eventually it's going to be business assault charges or business STDs. Eventually it's one or the other. Here's another way to do it. You don't need to learn sales. You don't need to learn sales. I teach client acquisition and they're different things. And it doesn't happen the way most people think it does. Nathan, you've been in my world for a couple of years now. You've gone through all of my stuff. You use it. You say it works. You're a fanboy. You totally love me. I don't pay you to say that. Does this work? This as in the new way? Yeah, the way that I teach to get clients. Oh, yeah. Um, totally non-promotional or whatever, but I've been, especially the last couple of months, I've been flooded with clients, and now I'm going through the process, and this is kind of the next level of working with you is going through the process and qualifying people and not doing the hard qualify where it's, oh, fuck you, bro, you're not good enough. It's more of a... Um, well, let's make sure this is a good fit. And I don't want to take your money from you if you're not a good fit. And I don't want to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And um, being, in, being in that position, having that sense of power over the negotiations completely changes the dynamics completely. Every single sales call that I go into now, I've, I'm 100% confident going into it. And I know at the end of the sales call, it's my decision. Do I want to take this person on as a client or not? And it's not a, it's not a, um, is this person good enough for me? It's a, it's the analogy that you, man, you changed my life with this. The doctor analogy, is this person actually in need of the remedy that I have? And that just changes everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. It comes from a place of choice, not arrogance. And that I think is the biggest distinction, right? A lot of people that teach the sales thing, they're like angry 12 year old boys that will do and say whatever they think they need to, to get their way. Problem is, is getting it that way usually doesn't last very long. 15 minutes of fun is certainly not worth 45 days of penicillin, right? I mean, let's just be real. 15 minutes of fucking closing the client and getting their money is not worth dealing with bullshit for 45 days. Like, yeah. If you want weak-minded people who can't make a decision on their own, by all means, learn all the persuasion hacks that you can. Get 10, 20, 30 appointments a week and close a few of them. Have fun with that. <laughs> Okay, Landon, I feel like we did a very good job of planting a flag this week and being like, hey, fuck those people over there. If people want to, if, if this resonated with people and they're like, I want to learn more about uh, this whole sales gorilla thing, where can they go to check out more? 
We do this weekly at salesgorillapodcast.com or you can come hang out in my crazy little Facebook group called Getting Clients Without Being Salesy. I love it. All right, man. Until next time, we will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't forget, I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand. It's probably mutual. Peace out.